the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! For I truly believe that in the days that come, the days that are before us, the Lord will have believers to focus on three areas. Many areas, but three areas. And this came by the Spirit for me, and I said I'm, I'll use this to wrap up my session so that we'll pray. There are three major areas that believers must focus on and contend for victory in experience. Number one, your spiritual health. Please write it down. Number one, your spiritual health. That means this should be the areas of focus, especially within the season that we're in now. Your spiritual health. That includes your relationship with God. Matthew 22. Please give us from verse 37. We're reading down to 40. Your spiritual health. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Next verse. This is the first and greatest commandment, 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It says on these two commandments, hang the law and the prophet. That means the purpose for all the law and the commandments that were given was a way of forcing you to achieve these two things. To love the Lord with all your heart and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Are we together now? Very important your spiritual health romans chapter 8 from verse 35 paul gives us a very intelligent rendition there he said who shall separate us from the love of christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness peril or the sword next verse we are reading to 38 as it is written for thy sake we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter 37 it says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and then it says for i am persuaded may this be your persuasion tonight that neither death nor life read with me nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come uh-huh shall be able nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Your spiritual health, that you must love the Lord above and beyond anything, above and beyond anyone. It's been my emphasis, our precious people sang it here, that we must love him, we must seek him. Loving the Lord means that your prayer life must be up and alive. Loving the Lord means that your fasting life must be up and alive. Loving the Lord means that your word study life must be up and alive. Your passion for the house of God, your passion for the things of God must be up and alive. Number two, what is the second area God will want us to focus on? in this season write this down your personal needs hmm. your personal needs and ladies and gentlemen please hear me do not downplay this take it as a prophetic instruction god wants you to begin to focus on your personal needs and get some results in place so that it can give you room to serve a bigger purpose are we together now yes your personal needs food shelter and all the personal things that you need to put in place if you don't think about it you don't plan it you don't take advantage of the grace of god to put things in place it will never happen hallelujah your personal needs that you make up your mind and say by the grace of god I should get to a point where this issue of thinking, where will I get money to buy food? Solve it. Solve it so that you can have the time to do no black kingdom things. When your personal needs are not sorted, I promise you, I wrote something down here. I said, your personal needs being met is the cure to depression and frustrations. When your personal needs are met, I can preach here and I can shout because I have Jesus in my heart, but I also have food in my house. 
Are we together now? Yes, sir. I have food in my house. So it has energized me to shout the word to your spirit because when I am done, I can go back. Jesus, your Jesus who preached at crusades, the Bible clearly told us that there were times he was hungry and there were provisions in place. Am I right on that? Listen to me. Please, I want you to take your personal needs seriously. Not just carnal needs, but that which is required to give you the stability to serve God. Like your children's school fees. Write it down and start doing something about it. Like the issue of a house. Write it down. Whether to rent or to build. In any way, take action. I have a responsibility over you. I will teach you the truth. It may not make sense now, but you will look back and say, thank you, apostle, for challenging me to take a step. There are people who will come and dedicate your houses before the end of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. See, every time God gives instructions like this, it's because behind that instruction is a grace to make it happen. You know what will happen to you by the time you sort the issue of rent out of your life? And God helps you to put systems in place. Now you can send your children to good schools. Now you have the authorization to lock yourself for three days and you will not feel irresponsible. Now your prayer life will become richer. You can pray for three days, but not when your children are out of school and they are writing PTA letters and your relatives are calling you all kinds of names. Then you say you are in the retreat for three days. No. Please take your personal needs serious. There are things that if they are not in place, if you're a man of God here, thank God for ministry and thank God for everything, but please by all means, obtain grace to pay attention Oh, Apostle, I think I need a car now to help me to be efficient in ministry. Do not think you are carnal for thinking that. If there is a legitimate need, write it down and obtain the grace and the wisdom to do something about it. Are we together? Our children are going to college now. Their school fees will be ABC. Let's sit down and think about it. Through desire, a man, Proverbs 18.1, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Your personal needs. This is the season where God is ready to come through for you. You have prayed for others. You have interceded for others. Some of you, you are the ones that God has raised in your family and everything that comes to your life is distributed. But in this season, God wants to sort your personal life. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Can I tell you the truth? By the time you make progress and you move forward, God gives you a job. Some of these material blessings that come to help support your efficiency come. A car, a house, good children, a good spouse. You are very happy. You are doing well. Who told you your spiritual life will not be efficient? You know I'm not lying. Was that not what kept you awake in the night? And yet you were not praying. You were not praying and you were not sleeping. As for me, there are certain things I wave them goodbye. And the Spirit of God held their hands and forced them to wave me back. Are we together now? Yes. Please stay and sort certain things in your life. As a result of this teaching, don't just say this is a powerful revelation. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Go back home and sit down. Pray in tongues for 10 minutes to avoid distraction. Then settle down. What is the meaning of this thing I've heard now? I have noticed. I don't even have clothes to wear. So when my destiny helpers call me, well, how will I go to them? Don't say it does not matter. And I'm not talking of living a fake life. Don't go and borrow money and start doing some of these things. Rather, receive favor when I'm praying for it. Are we together? But you need to go down. I found out I just have one, one nice cloth. This is embarrassing. And it's not lack of money. It's lack of thinking and lack of planning. Go and look for a good tailor. Five, six nice clothes. Lord, thank you for your glory. And then the invitations can start coming for you. Because you are not even prepared for it. My CV. I know I've been applying and I'm tired. But let me take a step of faith. 
Let me start studying on relationships because I sense that soon God will bring a destiny helper to my life and let me learn how to talk to great people so that I don't close a door by myself. You don't have a job but use the time to learn on relationships. Oh, this is the protocol of greatness. This is how to talk to them. Every man's need is his point of contact. You are now learning. Then God will send somebody and with courtesy and discipline in the midst of this bedeviled generation, you greet somebody with manners and courtesy. The person looks and says, what kind of lady are you? Where are you coming from? Oh, you look like a face I've seen somewhere. That's the Holy Ghost playing his own part now. Do you have a job? No. Can you do the job of a secretary excellently? Yes. Can you manage 650000 for a start? Watch this. And by the time you come and testify, ignorant people will say, is it just that? But they don't know when you were studying people's skills, when you were crying for favor, you were engaging the various systems. I hope someone is learning. Don't say I don't have a job and you fold your arms grumbling and gossiping and getting angry. That does not produce the results. Do what you can do now. Pray, get materials, buy the truth. In the name of Jesus, he's called me to be a kingdom financier. I may not have anything now, but in the name of Jesus, let me give myself to learning. Let me give myself to diligence. When others are sleeping, you wake up. God has told you he's giving you a global ministry. Nobody knows you for now. Stop moving around with cards and saying, invite me. That's not how it works. Neither do men light a lamp. Get that fire on the lamp. Get that fire on the lamp. Be like John Wesley. He says, set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn. Clamoring for invitations is not how it works. Going on social media and asking the world to follow you is not how it works. People follow results, not people. Now, thanks be to God. Minimize movies, minimize social media exposures. They are wonderful, but minimize it. Come into a realm of discipline where you say from seven to nine, I'm responding to emails and once it is nine, shut that email down. Not because you, can, you, are, you are training yourself. Your mind and your spirit is learning. Everything God gave man, he gave man authority over. The moment you do not have authority over elemental forces, how can you be trusted with the destinies of nations? Man of God, continue your prayer. It's a system that works. Continue the fasting. It's a system that works. Continue the night vigil. No invitations yet, but you just continue. Continue your word study. Get books on church administration and be learning. Get books, the stories of the pain of people who made mistakes in ministry and some of them were open enough to show their scars. Don't make the same mistake. Use the opportunity to study. Ah, these are the pitfalls. When I get here, I will jump. Thank this man for showing me his scars. How does financing ministry work? Apostle, my own is that I must marry. I agree. Have you learned how to be a responsible father? Or are you just looking for a wife? Are we together now? What if your wife gives birth to twins in nine months? Are you ready for that? This is how to prepare for the blessing. You know, in church, I, I, I hope you are seeing my, my, my passion. I'm not just shouting for nothing. Most people in church are not prepared for what they are praying for. Lord, give me a, a wife. You've not managed yourself. You've not managed your home. You still call people and disturb them from morning till night. Bros, can you give me this? Can you? You are not ready for a family yet. It's as simple and as honest as that. The day you put your life in order, dress everything that is scattered in your room. Arrange your room as a proof that you are ready to train children. At that point, God will now honor you. You see how it works. We must restore responsible Christianity. The kind that makes believers become a praise. Until now, our lives become a mockery to the world. And we are just shouting amen. And that is wonderful. But ladies and gentlemen, I repeat to you that there is a world that if we do not stay with God, in the next five, ten years, Christians will not be able to relate with the world that is evolving. I assure you, financially, sociologically, we will be at a loss.
The only thing that will change is not IT and technology. The thinking is changing. Civilizations change, but most believers are not staying with the word of God to know what the next 10 years will be like. And you see, sometimes we preachers that do not insist for your transformation, for some reason, because we are still offering value, whatever happens, we can secure ourselves at least in our homes and whatever it is. Whether I preach or I mislead you, somebody will give me 10 naira, somebody will give me 20 naira, and I can feed myself. But what about you? That's why everybody is becoming a preacher, because it looks like that's the only way to be blessed. I made up my mind and I vowed as a covenant with God that I will never manipulate anybody to collect 10 naira, 20 naira. The blessing of the Lord upon my life does not come because I'm a preacher. It comes because I understand the economic system of the kingdom. And it is not a secret. It can be learned. Like somebody can subscribe to be a tailor. And after three, five months, when you understand the human body that I described, you now see the aspect of your life that is not working. All you need to know is to methodically follow a proven pathway. Unfortunately, our world is full of liars across boards. People People claiming to know things without results to show so the Bible says there are some them you must follow not every them but some them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise koinonia hear me it is my desire according to Genesis 17 and verse 6 I have taught you here that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant your spiritual vibrancy is my primary assignment and in life and in death I will give my all to it but in addition to your spiritual vibrancy there is a mandate upon my life to raise a people of influence at a global scale it says and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee it says and kings shall come out of thee yes don't just jump and say abraham's blessings are yours knowledge can turn you from your lowly estate to rise to become a point where you become an envy to the world and it, from that elevated standpoint look what jesus did for instance in manchester look the kind of glory it brought i know that many people say a lot of things and i give him all the glory but did you know what it means to part full that auditorium and feed over two thousand people and not collect offering and not pay anything and not owe one pound you know what it means to feed over 2,000 people and you are not a criminal? Until you have the result, keep quiet. Listen, we shouted these days from the days we were in one room. These are not things that just happen like this. It's not a mistake. It can be reproduced again. Don't think it's a mistake. No. He that strives for mastery is not crowned until he strives lawfully lawfully because God is giving a new facelift to his bride that we are presenting a portrait of a true apostolic and prophetic church that is not all about compromises it's not all about no there are people who can serve God with the dignity of kingdom integrity but the key like somebody who has gone to the gym the digestive system is working well by the grace of God, I tell you, until Jesus comes, there will never be a point in this service where you will come and will say, oh, we need to pay for this, this, maybe the bill for this. No, 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 no. We will give people an opportunity to sow. But by the grace of God, you can lay hold on eternal life. There are things when you find you have found. There is nothing the devil can do about it. So don't think that when preachers speak, they are just speaking nonsense. No, no. I will not come and burden you here. There are sincere preachers who love God, but the moment their bills come upon them, they start compromising. They are not evil people. They have just allowed certain systems to be wanting in their lives. The call for you now is don't wait till your children start asking you questions and say, Daddy, where were you when God was teaching other people? Where were you when God was showing them the keys of accessing power through prayer and fasting? Why are you a pastor of a powerless church? And then you get angry and call them rude. Ah. 
May those that come out of us not ask us questions we cannot answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm challenging you. So anything that is not working in your life now, look at you. You are the fourth or fifth or sixth born. Yet out of 12 people, you are the only person who has risen. Look at the pain it is causing for you. You are earning over 1 million, yet you cannot do anything. Because someone will have to call you. Do you think it is the will of God for you to be in that state? What if there is something you can know? Oh dear. What if there is something you can know? What if between where you are and where you need to go, there is something you need to know about value, about relationships, about influence? Daddy, do you want to pass on to glory and leave your children to become beggars? Do you want to go to your grave knowing that you did not live an excellent life? You see, the thing about the kingdom is that from any level you can start. Please listen to me. This is not just a preacher talking. This is from my heart. You came to church. You are watching your children grow, celebrating their birthdays every month, but there is no corresponding growth. Don't say it does not matter. A day will come you will watch your children if you don't work on them become armed robbers and prostitutes because they have to make ends meet god wants you to sort the issue of your needs now if you need to seek counsel seek counsel you need to look for mentorship look for mentorship you need to go for advanced training go for advanced training you need to listen to messages do remember your children while you are doing it don't go to bed knowing that people will stand up and ask questions it is selfish to make decisions that do not have posterity in view Yet the church is full of people like this. We shout amen, we say amen, and we are programming a generation that will be on outright rebellion. By the time a child gets up and meets an irresponsible father, respectfully speaking, an irresponsible mother, they do not even know how his school fees was paid. I say this to you sincerely from my heart. There are people whose fees have been paying for years and decades. I have never seen their parents. They have not even come to find out who pays their school fees, who says to say thank you. That is the kind of, and many people are in church. I do this because I love Jesus and I do it with all my heart. But imagine if these ones were left and their lives and you go and find out that your daughter has become something else and you say you are an embarrassment to the family. No. All we say is demons. Yes, it may be coming from your father's house, but they took advantage of the deficiency of systems working to activate their operation. Are we together? When it's time to pray tonight, we'll pray oh, because someone needs to cry. While you are seated, I just want you to see the picture of your children and see all of them rejoicing and say, thank you, daddy. Thank you for listening to Apostle. Thank you. It looked like it was going to be too late, but thank you for making this decision. I'm not talking about hustling. You've tried to hustle. It did not work. This thing is not about this issue of fire by... <laughs> The system of the kingdom is so methodical and precise. When you are properly mentored, you will marvel and wonder at the exactitude that comes with the kingdom system. It's not about trial and error. If it is not there, you do not understand it. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Let me finish what I must give you. I just gave you two. Number one, your spiritual health. I said these three areas the Lord put in my heart.
that this should be the area of focus in this season. That means you should stay in this area still. Results and victory is producing experience. Number one, again, your spiritual health. Number two, your personal needs. It's time for some things to work in your life. It's time to have personal results. It's time for certain things, sort some things once and for all so that you can make constructive kingdom progress. And then number three, the third area that you should focus on is becoming an effective witness. Becoming an effective witness. You have been taught and you know by now that for the believer your life is not your own that there is a bigger purpose beyond your personal needs a bigger purpose beyond just your family your children your career your purpose must be connected to kingdom come to have eternal value hallelujah the reason why god is helping us and causing us to know him the reason why god is opening us to the wisdom systems and the dominion systems that make for an excelling life is so that we can have the liberty and the access to now serve his purposes to serve his purposes with our lives jesus said in john chapter 3 and verse 34 3 and 34. Am I right on that? Please look for it for me. My meat is to do and to the will of him that has sent me and to finish it. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. My will is to do, my meat is to do John 4, my apologies, 34. My meat, my satisfaction, my nourishment, that which energizes me is to do the will of him not just to get a job not just to get a pay raise these things are within the circumference of your personal needs do you know that there is a realm where God can sort your life and you can focus when you wake up in the morning it's not about children's school fees again it's not about a house or house rent or a car or whatever it is when you get up in the morning is father what are we doing for the kingdom today and he tells you there is a crusade happening somewhere the budget is a hundred million and you say lord can I, can you give me the privilege of writing it off and you call and say let it be done pray about something else not the finances this is your life participating in kingdom come or you build a house and you say any missionary that comes here let this be the place is where they will rest ah it is such a beautiful way when you know your life is counting as far as the kingdom is concerned there are many of you here in one of these days God will so empower you you will just get up and go to an orphanage and and say for the next one year for the next one year you will give them materials, you will give them Bibles, you will give them food that can take them for one year and tell them, I came as a representative of Jesus. I came to show you the love of Jesus. I was an orphan myself and now I know your pain, but I brought you the gospel. The, a gospel that has been carried on a bag of rice the gospel that has been carried on a bag of spaghetti the gospel that has been carried on a year's worth they will listen to it. hallelujah or some of you will see some man of God who is laboring sincerely maybe in the village or where you come from and he's not had the privilege to know what you are knowing and because God has blessed you you have activated all the systems in the kingdom that make for holistic dominion and victory now you can get a car and call him and say sir I know that you may not know all it takes but it is an honor for me and my wife and my children that we are contributors to your loving Jesus to your remaining intact and serving him in truth and the man with the tears in his eyes will kneel down and bless you to your children's children but everything I'm saying will remain a story and a parable until the systems of the kingdom are activated and ladies and gentlemen my assignment as always and especially this year this year of open doors is to show you system after system like you train a medical student in school they have all kinds of courses anatomy physiology community medicine all of those studies together that's all it takes to be a doctor but they have to go through it some of the classes are boring some of the classes are exciting they will stand before a cadaver 
and have to work on it to learn surgical procedures. But that is what it takes. Are you willing to endure the training that makes for a champion? This is the last question God is asking you tonight. Apostle, can you summarize it? Sorry, it does not work like that in the kingdom. Imagine a doctor who tells his professor, I'm year one. Can you summarize everything? I already know chemistry. Just show me where to put the injection. Show me how to cut people open. And in two months, I'm that brilliant, I can finish. No. See how long it takes a medical student to become a doctor. Six years minus any other thing. And that is just the entry level. You know how long it will take that person to become a consultant? But after they endure... With, with precision. Look, how many of you have watched masters in fields, whether a senior advocate, whether a consultant, the, the, the intelligence and the confidence that comes because you, the systems of God can be understood. They are finite. Learn the laws of prosperity. Don't just run around saying, I want to do business, put my money here. No, 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 no. That's not what you need first. You need illumination from heaven to know how the system works. What is God's relational system? How does God connect people to destiny helpers? What is the system that guarantees the anointing? How can I import the anointing as a product that when I'm traveling, I know it is traveling with me. When I'm on stage, I know it is with me. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. What are the systems of favor in this wicked world? Can I lay hold of it? This is my assignment to teach you and that I will do with all my heart even as I remain a student myself in the school of the spirit. But my call for you ladies and gentlemen is that you must assume the position of a student, not a member. A student, a student, a student, a student. Whilst you are sitting down, your children, both physical and in the, in the realm of the spirit, are saying thank you. Thank you for your endurance. Some of you, out of these teachings, you will have your own churches. You will have your own congregations. It will be, it will be a bad thing to know that you came out of here and you become a disaster somewhere because of inaccuracies, imbalance. No. Some of you may need to shut down on many things and just sit down and learn and learn. Let those run in run. They will run and still come back. You stay. But when you do learn, you will run with the speed of Elijah. And that in one year, you will do things that your life will become an unending wonder. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with. Let me walk. When we ask you to invite people to church, this is not for fame or increased membership. Some of you, as you are seated here, there are people you are wishing were hearing what you are hearing because you are saying, this is the answer. This is it. No wonder the psalmist will say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Whether it's a miracle service or any other service that you know in your spirit that it will be impossible for me to come and share the grace and go back. That I will come and live wiser. I will come and live stronger. I will be provoked unto godliness. Laying hold of eternal life that your life will become a description of excellence. It says, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting, use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.